Well, you've made some smart comments about the players in the draft pool, and your rankings are always very compelling. We've talked about various other positions. Today, we go over your tight end draft rankings, and there's number one, Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. Just uh, not to just turn 24. He turns 24 in October. Back injury in the season finale last year. Didn't participate in the combine or pro day drills. What do you see in Dalton Kincaid that has him at the top of your tight end stack I, I have a hard I mean he's going to be at the top of everybody's tight end stack Mike this is like a no-brainer right it's like a Bijan Robinson it's like a Devin Witherspoon we talked about last week at the corner position right I don't give a crap if he does the combine or does a 40 or whatever it's like Dan Campbell said you just turn it on the film that's what we want to go with more not the pajama Olympics man this is this is guy is he's a top ten pick, Mike. That that's how good we're talking here. This is a guy that phenomenal route runner, phenomenal after the catch. He's good in the run game and he can get better. He's aggressive. He's not afraid of contact, right? He he can block. He can do that, right? It's something he's got a little more potential to grow in. But he has a type of ability like in the passing game and stuff, Mike. It's 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 Travis Kelsey-ish, if that makes sense. The way he runs routes, gets up field, he's actually a bigger, stronger man than Travis Kelsey. He can make people miss and weave through traffic. People bounce off him. He has it all, right? TJ Hawkinson, who was drafted in the top 10 a few years ago, he's better than TJ Hawkinson was coming out. You know, Kyle Pitts right? The freak of nature at Atlanta right now. I'm not going to say he's that freak of nature, but he plays the position every bit as good as Kyle Pitts. So this is a guy that I, I you know, definitely top 15 pick. Wouldn't be shocked if somebody in the top 10 took him and has all the talent to really be the best tight end in football, Mike. He's, he's, he's pretty shocking when you watch him how awesome he is. I'm always fascinated where the tight ends fit in the broader hierarchy, right? So this is a, a good year for tight ends. Yes, it is. And it seems like there's more bad years than good years. But what does it take for a tight end to be among the top 10? We saw TJ Hawkinson top 10. Now the Lions ultimately traded him to the Vikings, but he instantly became a key piece of their offense there and will continue to be. Kyle Pitts, we saw him as a, a guy who, who and, and really, they haven't used him the way that the fantasy football crowd would like because we get fascinated by the potential of a Kyle Pitts, but he just doesn't have the ball in his hands. I think right. back to Vernon Davis, how how he did as the sixth overall pick out of Maryland back in 2005 or six, maybe 2006. But where, where does your top tight end this year in Dalton Kincaid right. fit with the top prospects? Is he a top 10? Is he top 20? Yeah. Yeah, top no. 32. He's definitely one of the top 15 players in the draft, Mike. Like, I would be shocked if he's on the board past 15. Would be shocked. I, I, I don't think it's crazy to think he goes in the top 10. I don't. Uh, I, I think that's what kind of guy we're talking about here. We're talking about a guy, Mike, like, you know, like we said, you could split him out and go, wait, one on one. What are they going to do here? Oh, they're going to put a corner on him? Well, he's not big enough. Let's throw him a slant. He'll box, box him out. Oh, it's a safety or a linebacker. Ooh, they're not going to be able to stay with him either for different types of reasons, right? So he's got all, he's got elite route running ability, like a, like a top end receiver. And then, you know, I think then you add that with the speed he has, which we don't have at the combine, but. There's not really anybody else you look at, you know, maybe one or two other guys that can run like this guy in the open field. I would think he runs four five ish if he's totally healthy and hitting on all cylinders. That's the way he plays. And then, you know, you talk about the physical nature, the size, the ability to catch the ball in traffic, Mike. I mean, he's like a tight end. That's a big part of me, the physicality in the passing game, right? You're in the middle of the field. You're going to have people all over you as you're catching the ball, and people are bumping you as you go through the linebackers and safeties. And you got to be able to play through that trash, let alone you got to be able to catch a ball and go, wait, the weak side linebacker here is about to knock me out as I'm going to catch it. No big deal. I'll do it. And that's the type of stuff that – takes you to the next level and Mike no doubt top 15 player in the draft and really I think there's a chance he he falls in the top 10 when all said and done let's look at that that uh, graphic again because I can't remember if Sam Laporta was in tier one or not I guess he's tier two he's tier two he's, he's, he's tier two this guy's by himself now where does he fit 
in the broader hierarchy of the yes. where players are going to go right and and and, uh, and what what do you expect out of him at the next level yeah well i think with him i mean first off well-rounded like really awesome football player a lot like dalton kincaid except not as good after the catch unbelievable route runner he's an iowa tight end so you know he blocks he does nfl type things in the run game you could see how here he's so crisp with his route running got unbelievable hips and feet he's got a little wiggle to make people miss after the catch doesn't have the physicality nature i talked about with the last guy as far as like he's not going to run over people when he catches the ball he's not he doesn't catch as many balls in traffic or with people hanging around him to that extent but this is a guy that, you know, like top 40 pick in the draft, I, I don't think there's any doubt. I wouldn't be shocked if it went late first round, but I think ultimately I expect Laporta to be early second round and probably start the run of the next group of tight ends that are not named Dalton Kincaid and start from there. I think that's where it's, it's going to kind of go. But, Mike, I would not be mad if this guy went in the end of the first round he's he's that type of talent he's really really damn good and a really good athlete on top of that and you can kind of see that on the film and the combine numbers do you know confirm what you see which is always nice and then we get into the guys you have in tier three you have three of them Michael Meyer Josh Wiley and Darnell Washington yes. uh, all all in the same cut really good uh, well, what what put Mayer as the top of the three. Mayer's like the traditional old school tight end, right? Mike, big square guy. And like, you know, he looks physical and rugged. And you see him here, right? I mean, he's got, th here's the first thing. And this is why he's three. Because a lot of people, like, I think the general public thinks he's going to be the number one off the board. He doesn't separate all that well. Even like you see here on some of these clips, he's never really open. Right, but he's amazing at the physicality catching, like we were just talking about. People around him, all that stuff. He's fearless, you know. And he's like you see there. He, oh, I'm gonna go up, extend the ball, and get hit or whatever. Now, yes, compared to the other guys, he's not the route runner. He's more of a lumberer and big. He's top heavy, right? His blocking wasn't as good as you'd expect for a guy like that. But damn, he's good, Mike. Go ahead, what? He, he he looks like an offensive lineman running pass route. A, a little bit, and it's, he, that's where it's not it looks pretty. Like, it looks like yeah. tackle eligible. Right. It's not pretty all the time, but here's the where it's, he's weird, Mike, and this is where, you know, the scouting process is fun and torturous and all of that. So he doesn't get open that well, right? His blocking, again, it's Notre Dame, so he blocks, but you go, ah, man, as big and strong as you are, why, you know, you should be a little bit better. Um, but when he gets the ball in his hands, Mike, he, he becomes an, a different animal. I mean, where it's like like the Dalton Kincaid guy. He runs people over. He can kind of weave through. He, like, tries to make something happen after the catch. So separation concerning. Blocking could be better, but with the ball in his hand, he's one of those guys that drags three and four people and breaks tackles quite regularly when you break them down. I've got a job for him in this NFL that's going to be even more imaginative about the rule that they did not take out of the game last week. Yeah. He becomes my quarterback in my goal line push play. Yeah, he'd be great for that. You, you know who you'd really like for that is the guy that I got a number five, right? And I, I'll, real quick, Josh Wiley from Cincinnati, he's really good. He's more of like, it looks almost like a big receiver, but he's 245. He's a little longer and leaner. He blocks really well, like amazingly well. It's not like crush you and kill you, but up there as far as route running with the top two guys in the draft. So I really like him. But then there's Darnell Washington from Georgia. And I know you saw him during the year. I don't know if you remember him. Maybe you want to pull up a picture of him right now. Darnell Washington, number zero from Georgia. He's the biggest tight end. I mean, if there's a guy that might be Gronk in the draft, it's this guy right here. First off, like, he's gigantic. And he's like having an extra tackle on the field, Mike. His run blocking is off the charts good. Off the charts. Dominates small people. Really big defense ends. He can dominate them and certainly hold his ground into a stalemate. And then he's a better athlete than you expect when you watch him. He doesn't get to do a ton. He's not going to be a guy you want to do double moves or fake a shallow cross and come out. But back shoulders, run down the middle, jump up, get the ball, that type of stuff. And he's got something to him after the catch. 
he might be the, you know, he's he's a high ceiling guy that's got a little bit of a more of a low floor than the rest of these guys. But damn, Mike, uh, he has a chance and has some things about him that you love and you know that big physical body can translate to the NFL for sure. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.